So, hello, Janina. Um, I would like to talk to you today a bit about uh, well, your own itinerary uh, in the arts and in academia, but also about the Camera Interactiva and uh, well, questions coming out from this program. So you were, you yourself sort of are a very multifaceted person. You did gender and film studies, two masters. Um, you are a filmmaker and your uh, latest film, The Diaries of an Elephant, won the um, Newcomer uh, Award in, uh, uh, during the Netherlands Film Festival. And also recently you became an impact producer. So, um, so being this sort of very diverse person, um, I wanted to start with asking you how important is research in your work and, and specifically also academic research? What, is, what kind of role does it play um, in your practice? Well, research has always played a really important part in my work because um, I made a conscious choice uh, back before I started the Master in Comparative Women's Studies that I would not go to film school. Um, fully knowing that I wanted to become a documentary filmmaker um, because I wanted to know what it was um, that I was making films about. Um, I wanted to really understand my subject matter. And back then I really thought that I would be making films um, like Kim Longinotto, which was you know, really socially active films and um, films that really explored um, uh, social inequality, um, things like that, and uh, haven't really turned out to be that kind of a filmmaker when I make myself. It's become much more about um, politics of memory um, and, and how we appropriate um, history in what we do today in many ways, shapes and forms. Mm. Um, but, but to be able to say that about my work, it's very much derived from research. And, you know, not, not every filmmaker would say my films are about the politics of memory, but um, I think it has a pro and con to work in that way. Um, it, the pro is that I have the ability to, to kind of bird's eye view um, the subject that I'm working on, the story that I'm working on, in the sense that I can, um, I can read so much about it and brainstorm in every which, which way direction and, and understand uh, the intricacies stories sometimes and how um, politics play a part in that or cultural background play, play a part in that or mm. the different things that can play a part in, in a story and that things aren't, aren't as simple as they seem. Mm. At the same time that's also of course a problem because very often in documentary filmmaking at least um, you know you also have to make a make a story approachable for others so it has to be it has to be simplified in a certain way. Um, but how do you do that without making it a simple story? How do you still make it an in-depth story, but it, with a clear narrative line? Mm, mm. But so then this is, I suppose, where the art of documentary filmmaking comes in, where the, the skill of an artist comes in, how to distill that story, yet still have the, the complexities in it. Right, right. And I think, I think very much that has to do with uh, knowing what it is you want to say and knowing what it is, uh, who you are as, mm. as a person and, and what is your own background that you always bring to a story. Mm. Um, that's something that I always really go into depth in, in, every, in a film that I make is I really, um, I really find, try and find what it is that I find so appealing about a subject. Mm. There's always this gut feeling that you have, you come across a story and you think, oh, I want to tell this. And then you go into depth, like, why is it that I want to tell this? And that, that process is something that I actually learned in comparative women's studies, really acknowledging your own situation, yeah. situatedness and knowing from which point of view you're speaking and how that is actually a really relevant part of the story that you're telling. Yeah. But nonetheless, I mean, research or academic research and, and the arts, they, they employ very different languages. Um, how do you negotiate those differences in languages? You know, what, how, how do you translate one into the other? Or, or maybe you don't, um, but th there is a clear difference. Do, do, you, do you sort of see that difference? Do you encounter it? And uh, does it pose a difficulty? Mm. Well, I think... Um I think 
I would answer that question by saying I don't consider myself to be an artist. I consider myself to be a documentary storyteller, which I think says a lot about methodology. So mm. rather than, um, yes, academia and, and, and art speak two different languages in that sense, but um, I think um, I think they feed off each other when we speak about methodology. So how do you approach your work? Um, mm. And um, and what does that mean for the what you what you produce? Um, so w within my work, that's that's always central. I always walk on those two legs. Um, I don't approach something or a film solely from an artistic point of view, in which I think about form. Mm -hmm. I don't. I always think about uh, uh, the theme first. Mm -hmm. I see. But then again, form is also, you know, form and content in that sense, they are also very uh, intricately connect connected and oftentimes you cannot take the two apart. And, uh, you know, we've been hearing also throughout the Camera Interactiva program that, um, and that's one of the premises that it's built on, that art is also a form of research. Would you agree with that? And if so, um, why and how, how do you see that? Um, research element of the arts. Yeah, what I'm trying to say with that aspect of methodology is that for me, and this is a personal, for me art becomes a form of research practice when it actually use, utilizes academic methods of research mm -hmm. and puts them into your, and you put that into your artistic work, mm -hmm. um, such as situatedness, such as um, critical thinking. I mean, if, if this is, if you appropriate that towards your work or you s learn certain skills during your academic line and you choose, I mean, that for me would be a form of when research becomes a form of art, art practice. Yeah, yeah, I see. And I suppose also, well, also the, the you know, wh when you speak in different language, for instance, visual language as a documentary filmmaker, you probably also, you know, th there's a there's different uh, information conveyed through that kind of language than academic language, which is basically well text-based. So I don't know if you see that also as a part of, you know, kind of when it becomes a research by investigating certain aspects that are maybe not so much investigated or investigated with different tools um, mm. in research and in arts. Yeah, I think I, I think within this form, especially within Camera Interactiva, what what we've learned so far, I think, is that very much the discussion that takes place within the digital humanities is is also very applicable here. Namely, what kind of researches do you need? Uh, what kind of artists do you need? Uh, and in digital humanities, what kind of programmers do you need in order to do that kind of work? Mm -hmm. um, and and rather than then perhaps, uh, and you can think of in terms of collaboration, which is actually something that I'm very much for, or you can think in terms of a new kind of skill set. Mm -hmm. So you can, you know, kind of those people that actually understand what art is and understand what art practice is, which is much more important, uh, and, and those that understand perhaps um, the mechanics of theory. Yeah, yeah. Well, since you mentioned collaboration, let's talk a bit about that. Um, you said that you're for it. Why are you for it? What what is it? What are the benefits of, of collaboration? Right. For you, for also for you personally, but also in general, how would you see it? Yeah, I say collaboration, but I actually mean co-creation. And what I mean by that is, um, I'm, I'm going to uh, give you an example. Mm -hmm. Um, before I decided fully that I wanted to become a documentary filmmaker, I went to South Africa and I was there for a while and I worked as a, I worked as a production assistant and also a camera assistant and we were, um, we were doing some field work and uh, we were out in the bush and we were uh, filming um, and the thing about wildlife filmmaking is that you um, as a director don't really have control. Mm -hmm. You sit and you wait. And that's all you, you can really do. And so we sat and we waited for um, elephants. And there was this 
at one point that this bull came towards us um, and he, he was at a extremely short distance from us. But we, there was nothing that we could do. All we could do was sit and wait for what he would do. I mean, assuming, of course, that he wasn't going to charge at us because the guy that was with us could you know, interpret his body language. But, um, but we just sat there and we watched each other. Mm -hmm. um, and for me at that moment, um, it really clicked and it gave me this inspiration of how I wanted to approach and make documentary films, which is in co-creation with my subject not meaning that I would give them authorship over the documentary that I'm making, but being really aware of how the subject that you know, you're, you're portraying is so much part of the choices that you make and that you, along the way of accompanying someone, you really become influenced by uh, what they do. And, and I think being open to that and not having this hard set of idea or vision that you have um, about a story really kind of, it makes things complicated, but it also mm. enriches it. Um, and it's, uh, I find it a very, um, I, I, I really enjoy that kind of method of working. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, but, you know, it, it also challenges the this co-creation challenges the idea of authorship to some extent. Yes. And I suppose there are things to be said for and against that. Um, what, what's your take on it? Yes. Um, I think there's a healthy balance to be found between um, really, I think, I think you're truly an author if you can, if you can collaborate. And what I mean by that is that you, um, you are clear enough on your own vision that it can withstand influence. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, you're open enough to, to mold your story to make it to become better. Mm. Um, because if you work, if I work on my own, I become stuck. Mm -hmm. And I can, I can, if I had a tremendous amount of arrogance, um, I could think that, you know, my idea is the greatest, but it's very often it's not. And especially, I mean, when you're making a film, that's why you make it with other people, and especially in your crew as well. Mm. You have like a, your, your camera person, your sound person, your editor. They all have trained in a certain skill set that, um, that they know better than you do. Yeah. And, and my role as a director is to make use of that skill set and knowledge. So that it can so that it can form and be part of my own vision, but I don't let it rule that. Yeah. I don't let it rule my vision, mm. but it becomes better because of that. Okay, but isn't crew a very different kind of working in a crew a very different kind of collaboration than, for instance, work uh, pe two people or more people working from coming from very different fields, like like for instance in camera interactiva that we have somebody from the arts and somebody from academia, which is a very different skill set, but you know, in, in this setting they sort of have an equal standing. Mm -hmm. They are both uh, authors of eventually of the stories that are going to be developed. And I can imagine that that creates, well, and we've seen that that creates um, you know, difficulties mm. or challenges. What do you think are the main challenges in, in this kind of work, in this co-authorship collaboration work? What I was saying about um about co-creation, about my relationship as a director to the subject that I'm filming, um, I think it is more appropriate to, to when we talk about the relationship between uh, the academic and the artist as we mm -hmm. have in Kama Interactiva. And I think, um, I think learning to speak each other's language is, um, uh, is important, or to meet each other halfway. Mm -hmm. um, But the reason I think that that's so important is because whether you're an academic or you're, or you're an artist um, or just generally a person who's making something, um, you know, this is something we talked about today as well, it's like the idea of talking on behalf of someone else. Mm -hmm. um, I think that through collaboration on that level uh, and maybe on that high intellectual level is so necessary because you have to, you have a responsibility as an academic and as an artist to question whether you are the person who should be telling this story. Mm. So 
when am I, as an artist, am I academically equipped enough to say something about academics? When, as an academic, can I really call myself an artist? Yeah. I think that's a, I think that's appropriate question to ask because very often, as a artist, can become very. I mean, doesn't even matter what kind of school that they work in, but they can become very um, agitated by an academic all of a sudden making something that they would call art, but maybe isn't art because it doesn't have the form or mm -hmm. the creativity that, that that artist would choose to do. At the same time, an artist trying to say something big about a subject matter that isn't at all critical or isn't at all mm. thought through is just as problematic. Yeah. Um, so I think that kind of collaboration is really necessary. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, speaking, you know, because you did also academic work, or you know, you have academic background. Um, how how much? What would be the benefits uh, for an academic to work with an artist? Because that's somehow a question that comes up quite often because what especially in these collaborative projects because what they are doing is not necessarily quite research um, but you know what, what is there then for the academic to 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 benefit from I personally think that it's a r excellent way for an academic to question their own research um, I don't mean to say that all academics are uncritical of their own work. Mm -hmm. um, but I think um, sometimes within the noise of difficult language and argumentation, um, a certain sense of reality might get lost. Same goes for artists, by the way, just to yeah. make that clear. I think as soon as you start collaborating on this kind of level, you get rid of a lot of noise. Mm -hmm. um, so my answer would be the same reason as an artist uh, would want to collaborate. So that point would also be interesting for an academic, which is um, confronting yourself from your work with a reality that is perhaps something that's not very comfortable and takes you out of your comfort zone. So your, so your work gets some more not, not necessarily so much more depth, but perhaps a new perspective. Yeah. And whether it helps you and whether you take something along with that is, of course, a different question, but I think, I think it's, a, it's a process of learning, right? Yeah. Perhaps it's also a new angle or a new dimension that your work, uh, your academic work can get yeah. from these kinds of collaboration. Yeah, definitely. Okay, let's, let's, uh, the, the last question that I wanted to, do, to, to ask you is about the future. Um, and specifically the future of storytelling. I mean, obviously, the, we created this program um, together with you so that, because we, we thought that this is, this is something that is, um, well, that is sort of forward-looking. Mm. So if you were to speculate, um, what is the future of storytelling? And what's the new, what is the next big skill or medium or form um, that is going to be important. Yeah. Non-linear forms of storytelling uh, are going to become really important. Um, how do you make how you how do you make a, a construct a story out of fragments? Um, I think that's becoming more and more important and necessary skill set that you have to have. Um, also, again, I'm sorry. Collaboration is a really important skill set that you have to have, and I'm not talking only about you know expression and making mm -hmm. work better, but I'm talking about very practically working together uh, as an artist and as an academic in terms of financing your work. Yeah. So learning how to collaborate without losing your sense of authorship, without losing your sense of voice, so that you can continue to do the work that you do, so that you can collaborate with. Uh, with NGOs, with organizations, with other people uh, to bring your work forward, but at the same time continuing to be a strong part of that um, is incredibly important. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, yeah, thanks. <laughs>